Hi, my name is Alejandro and I am the founder of Audio Brewers and we are extremely excited to have partnered with Soyuz Microphones in the development of the software side of this beautiful 013 Ambisonics microphone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the features of our plugins and how you can work with them in your DAW. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to the DAW and I have here a very simple Ambisonic session in which I have a recording and some footage done for the Soyuz microphone. So this microphone records in what we call A format. Every single Ambisonics microphone records in A format, but for working with this sound, you have to transcode this A format to what we call B format. For that, we have developed a transcoder, which is going to be the first thing that you are going to insert in your DAW. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I have here my Ambisonics track, the Soyuz transcoder. And that's it, I don't have to do anything else. You just have to insert the transcoder in the very first insert so that the transcoder works with um, the audio, the raw audio from the microphone and it converts it to B format. Now, if by the time you were recording this microphone, the microphone was placed horizontally or upside down, all you will have to do is to change the orientation. But because I can see here that the recording has the microphone in an upright position, I'm just gonna leave the orientation to be in an upright position. Now, I'm gonna go to the input and the output sections. First of all, you have the input section, which of course has a volume control in which you can control the volume of your incoming signal. And then you have a monitor and a quality button. By setting this plugin in monitor mode, you're gonna be getting a zero latency conversion from A format to B format, which means that this is great for tracking, for recording, because you're gonna have an instant response of whatever you are recording. You can later change this to quality mode. So basically you can record using monitor mode and then you can mix using quality mode. The quality mode will give you a little bit of latency, which is going to be compensated automatically by the DAW. You will not hear that there is latency, but the processing is going to be with much more quality because we have measured each of these capsules and we have measured the radius of the microphone and we have written an algorithm which is going to adapt precisely to this 013 Ambisonics microphone. So. I'm gonna set it to quality because the recording has already been done. And finally, in the output, um, I also have a volume control, which is gonna allow me to uh, control the output volume of the signal. And then you have a couple of buttons, which is the Ambix and the Fuma. So by setting this plugin to Ambix, you're gonna be getting what we call an Ambix signal, which is the most common ambisonic signal out there. Like basically most of the plugins that exist for ambisonics will work with Ambix. Fuma is a different type of channel arrangement for Ambisonics, and there are not many plugins that work in Fuma. We have included a Fuma conversion here just in case you happen to have a plugin that works in Fuma. But know that all our plugins, including the 013 decoder, will work with an Ambix signal. So basically what you do is just leave it in Ambix and it will work. So that's it. And finally, I am going to insert a decoder. My signal is now being transcoded from A format to B format, and now I need to decode it from B format to whatever my speaker layout is. So if you are using headphones, if you are using a stereo layout, if you're using a 5.1 or a 714 Dolby Atmos layout, you are going to have to decode this ambisonic signal into that. And that is what I'm going to do now. So here in uh, my Pro Tools session, uh, my signal is going to my output, which is a 714 array, but I'm gonna send it to my Dolby Atmos bed instead. So for doing that, I'm just gonna route my output to my bed. And now the signal is going to my bed. But this signal has to be decoded to the width of the bed, which is 712. And for doing that, I'm just going to insert the 013 decoder. And the 013 decoder, I'm going to insert it from first order Amisonics to 712, which is the width of my bed. If you were using a stereo layout or a headphones layout, just make sure to set your output to stereo. Or if you're using a 5.1 uh, layout, just make sure to insert in 5.1. The cool thing about Ambisonics is that all this is done in the software side, meaning that you can decode today to stereo, tomorrow to 712. You don't have to touch anything. You just have to load the new plugin and you're gonna get the signal with the real three-dimensional properties of the recording itself. So in my case, I'm just gonna set it to be 712. And now I'm going to send this to my bed. So if I open my Dolby Atmos renderer, you will see that there's the bed here and now I have the plugin here. So I'm just gonna press play and just make sure that my bed is working properly.
Okay, so you can see that now I have sound in all my bed, but I am getting a stereo signal. That is because I have my Dolby Atmos renderer set to binaural so that you can hear this signal properly because YouTube doesn't support 712, of course. Now, let's just say that I'm not using Dolby Atmos and I'm using a traditional stereo layout. Well, no problem. You can just unload your decoder. Let me just get rid of the Dolby Atmos renderer because we're not gonna be using it. Let's just imagine that you're using a stereo setup. So. Instead, I'm going to add my decoder to go from first order ambisonics to stereo. And as soon as I do it, um, you will see that I have my stereo layout here. So if I press play, and you can see that you're getting your ambisonic signal as an input and then the stereo signal as an output. And that's the cool thing about ambisonics that it doesn't matter if you today you need a stereo signal and tomorrow you need a Dolby Atmos signal. All you have to do is reload your uh, decoder in Dolby Atmos and the three dimensional properties of your audio are going to be there. Always everything. You will never lose anything of detail. Now, let's just explore the decoder here. The decoder is divided in four sections. First of all, you have your monitor here, which is gonna show you the signal of your input and of your output. This is great for being able to raise or lower the gain so that you make sure that the original signal is not picking. And this is what I'm going to do right now. So let's just go here and let me just open the transcoder and see. can see that as I raise or lower the volume, everything is changing in my input and in my output conversion. So basically the monitoring is a passive um, section of the plugin that is just going to guide you through the loudness of your signal. So another section of this plugin will be the rotator, which is this part here. The rotator is a great tool in case you want to rotate the three-dimensional sonic sphere. So right now, if I were to record in this uh, microphone, and the microphone was in front of me, my voice will be sounding in the front center of the mic. But if after the recording, I wanted to rotate it so that my voice sounded a little bit off axis or above or below, I could use the rotator just to change the orientation of this acoustic sphere. And that's what I'm going to do now. Um, the rotator, again, is not going to affect your original audio recording. So this is great because you can just accommodate um, every single um, three-dimensional sound field independently and you can do it afterwards, you can change it, you can um, rotate it again and you're never gonna lose anything of your recording. So let's just press play and rotate this signal a little bit to see how it works. You can see that the rotator has a sort of visualizer that is going to show you how the signal is behaving around your head. So in the first rotator, I am rotating the signal in a horizontal manner. So whatever is here, I can rotate it so that it just go behind my head or to the other side like this. Then the second rotator is going to rotate the signal so that whatever is in front center, it can go above me or below me. So if I were to leave it like this and I were to listen to this signal in a Dolby Atmos array, I would be listening to the violin on top of me because I have grabbed the whole sphere, sphere and I will have put it like this. So the front center will be above my head. And equally, if I were going to do it like this, uh, the violin will be below me, but you know, there is no below in Dolby Atmos. But anyway, the sphere will still move. And finally, you have the third control, which is the diagonal movement of the sound, meaning that what is uh, on your left or on your right is gonna be moving like this. So you can accommodate the uh, three-dimensional acoustic sphere diagonally. So basically whatever change I do um, to my rotator is gonna be reflected automatically and immediately on my signal. So you will be able to hear these changes immediately. And you can disable the rotator um, just by clicking in this button. Like that, you can do like A-B comparisons uh, with the rotator off and the rotator on. Another section of the plugin is the dominance control. The dominance control will allow you to push the acoustic energy of the sound field towards any of the dimensional poles. So for example, say that you have a three-dimensional sound field that goes all around your head, but you want to listen to the whole signal a little bit more in front of you. You can 
push all the energy, the acoustic energy towards the front or toward the left or towards um, on top of your head or below or to the right or to the back. And you can do that with the dominance control. It's a very easy thing to do and it will help you distribute the signal. If you have more than one ambisonics recording and you want to blend them together, this is a great tool. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to play with the dominance. I'm just going to push all this um, uh, strings trio. I'm just going to push it to the front, push it to the left, push it to the, to the right, and you will be able to hear this. You can see that as I change this XY pad towards any of the sides, the sound goes towards that side. So this is the front, this is the left, this is the right, and this is the back. So this is a great tool for just moving the signal around like the acoustic energy. And then you have this um, slider, which is going to help you push the signal above your head or below your head. So let's just say that you want it all this music to sound a little bit higher than your um, ears, you could push this above your head and it will sound on the height speakers very cool. And again, you can disable the dominance control just by clicking here. You can disable it and enable it again. This is great to do an A-B comparison. The rotation and the dominance control are independent, so you can enable one and disable the other one or enable both or disable both. It's irrelevant. That's pretty, pretty cool. And finally, we have our decoding section, which is where the ambisonic signal that you have created is getting decoded. So after the recording, after it's being rotated, after the dominance control, the ambisonic signal has to be decoded to a speaker layout because an ambisonic signal doesn't have speakers. It's speaker agnostic. It can have from one speaker to infinite speakers. We have created this decoder that is going to adapt to the most common uh, speaker layouts. If you click here, you will see everything that is available. And depending on your DAW, you will be able to change this on the fly or by reloading the plugin, etc. So right now we have our decoder going to stereo and you can see that you have the pair of speakers, which is the stereo pair, which is the left and the right speakers. And you see here that you have um, some controls. First, you have the azimuth control, which is where the speakers are in relation to your head. So basically, when you're in the studio, your speakers will be um, 45 degrees to the left um, and 45 degrees to the right, or 30 to the left, 30 to the right, if you are, have a narrower setup. And this, you can control it from here. You can go from zero degrees, which is going to be one speaker right in front, or two um, 45 degrees, which will be the normal um, width, or you can even go all the way to 90 degrees, which will be if your left and right speakers were like this, the signal like this is gonna be super wide. And if you go beyond 90, it's gonna sound from behind. You can see that any change I do here is also changing the position of the speakers here. This is a visual representation of where the speakers are located. So whatever change I do here, you can see that it reflects here, these are your speakers. So in other words, just make sure that the azimuth is always matching the position of your speakers. Then you have the elevation control. In case your speakers were above your ear or below your ear, this is also gonna help you place the virtual speakers there. So in case you wanted to have them higher, you can raise the elevation or lower, you can lower the elevation. So you can use the default settings, which is something that we have written in the plugin. But if you have a non-traditional layout, you can also play with the position of the speaker. Also, we have a high pass control, which is a very useful control that is going to allow you to cut the bass on your recording because sometimes, you know, you can get a little bit too much bass and you just want to get rid of it. So the high pass control is very useful, especially when you are using wider than stereo layouts. I'm going to show you that in a while. And finally, you have your volume control, which is going to allow you to control the volume of a specific set of speakers um, to solo it or to mute it. And if you happen to use a speaker layout that contains an LFE channel, you can also send your signal to the LFE channel by using this control. In stereo, there's no LFE, so you forget about it. But if we were to move to Dolby Atmos, everything will change. And that's what I'm going to do now. Let me just unload the, the decoder now. 
and load it again with a Dolby Atmos array. So if I set it to be 712, which is the width of my Dolby Atmos bed, um, let's open the render again. This is my bed, and now I am decoding to my bed. So if I press play, you can see that there is sound going to my whole bed. And you can see that now I have more channels because this is not a stereo setup anymore. Now this is a 712 setup where you have the seven speakers around your ears, you have the two height speakers, and you have the point one, which is the LFE control. And just like that, you also have the channels reflected in the plugin. You have the front left right, you have the center, you have the side left right, you have the rear left right, and then you have the top side left right, which are the height speakers. And finally, you have the LFE. By default, the LFE channel is always empty because um, LFE channel is supposed to be used for effects and an ambisonics microphone is supposed to be re recording real stuff. However, if you were to send something to the LFE channel, you have this control here, which is going to send some bases, non-directional, to the LFE uh, channel. So if you press play and you increase the LFE, you can see that the LFE meter increases and Subsequently, you are sending signal to the LFE channel, which is going to be reflected in your subwoofer. Additionally, um, you have, again, the azimuth and the elevation control of each of your speakers. So, for example, if you wanted to change the um, elevation of your height speakers, you can do it from here. And you can see that everything is being reflected in the speakers on the graphics user interface. And finally, when you are using so many speakers, this is when the high pass becomes very useful. For example, I personally always like to high pass the height speakers because usually like bass from above your head doesn't really sound very nice. So I always use uh, some filter here on the height speakers because I like it a little bit more when they are on the mid to high uh, range. And like that, you can just sculpt the sound of your ambisonics recording into your real life speaker layout. You can solo each of these um, channels in case you want to listen to how each of the pairs behave or in case you want to reposition your speakers. And this is gonna be a great tool to sculpt your mix and to listen to your output in any speaker layout possible. If you have any other further questions about how Ambisonics works, um, what you can do uh, with an Ambisonics recording, or how you can apply it in real world, you can come in contact with us at hello at audiobrewers.com. We will be super pleased to try and help you the best we can. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.